Good morning. Get on in here. We got lots to talk about. I'm excited. I'm really getting excited because I'm a carb addict, but that's okay. I'll be good. Okay, folks, get on in here. There's four of you. We got stuff to talk about. I got my coffee and I'm hugging my cup, which is one of my favorite things to do is hug a cup. My hair is sticking up everywhere and I have a, a skunk stripe this morning. Look at that. Anyway, got my makeup on. I think I just spilled coffee on me. My eyes are itching. I don't think it's allergies. I think I just got dry eyes. I forgot to put my drops in last night. Anywho, so trying to, that's just not working well. I don't, I got to redo my little setup here. Okay, folks. Yesterday, I made you pinto beans, and boy, were they good. But we forgot to do one thing, and that one thing was take Beano before we ate them. <laughs> Needless to say, it was um, an eventful evening. But we love, we love, um, we love pinto beans. I like to put a little chutney in mine, and then... Um, we had country fried potatoes, which I took pictures of that too, and I'll teach you how to do that. But the country fried potatoes are, are uh, mm. I like them with bacon, but I didn't have any utility bacon, I like to call it. It's, it's cheap bacon in a package that I can cut up a few slices and get in the skillet. But I didn't have any of that last night, so I just made onions and potatoes. And Robert loves them. He absolutely loves them. You know, he didn't marry me because I could cook because he didn't. Well, he did know I could cook because on our first date, I cooked for him, which was kind of weird. Anyway, I wanted to talk to you about how I learned to cook. When I got married back in 1974, I could cook spaghetti because I learned to do that when I was about 10 years old. I could cook um, macaroni and cheese, but I really didn't know how to make macaroni and cheese. I just knew how to grate cheese up and put it in macaroni. I learned to do that when, well, I learned to dump a can of cheddar cheese soup into, into s macaroni noodles. <clears throat> um, what else could I make when I got married? I couldn't make a whole lot. I didn't know how to fry eggs. I didn't know how to make scrambled eggs. I didn't know how to do a whole lot of things. But as a wedding gift, somebody, and I don't know who, gave me, not this book, but one like it. This is my favorite cookbook. This taught me how to cook. This book has pages in it. Now we have the internet, but in 1974, we did not have the internet. This was the best book to learn how to cook. I learned how to make apple pies. I can still make apple pies to this day without even looking at the recipe. So folks, if you know somebody getting married, and they don't know how to cook, or if they do know how to cook and just want to learn to cook different things, give them this cookbook. This keeps them focused. It has lots of little dividers in it that have different sections. Just this morning, I've been going through it because somebody wanted to know how to make a Christmas morning breakfast. So I've kind of been looking at it from a Christmas morning For some reason, my slack's not working well. So, this is a great book. You can download it for your Kindle, but I wouldn't recommend it for, for Kindle because 
You just kind of need a book. But I learned how to make cinnamon rolls in this book. I learned how to, lots of little, there's lots of tips. There's conversion sheets at the front. There's just everything. There's metric information in the back. Emergency substitutions. This is how I learned to cook is out of this book. And taking the time to sit down and read a cookbook and learn how to do things so one of the things that I have learned when when you're making cinnamon rolls and I'm gonna get back to cinnamon rolls is you need bread flour you need bread flour and you need fresh yeast Yes, you need need to make sure your package of yeast is good. But in the little book, it'll teach you how to proof your yeast to know that it's going to rise. And you just put it in, in water that's just a little bit warmer than your finger. So we're 98.6. needs to be about 105, 110 degrees. So just a little bit warmer than your finger. And you proof your yeast in this water. And it works. It really does work. Because if your yeast works, everything else is going to work. And it's simple. If you have a bread machine, that's great. But you don't need a bread machine to be able to bake, bake cinnamon rolls. You really don't. Now, it's hard for me to read your comments and stuff as, as I'm trying to talk. Because I just don't talk and read at the same time I can listen and read but I can't I can't really talk and read I have my coffee now the one thing you can do like I'm gonna I'm gonna put together my dressing a little later today so you can see how I do that but with cinnamon rolls go back to cinnamon rolls people have been asking for recipes and I've, I've sent Liz and Patty a link for Leanne's recipes for Christmas morning strata. It's a it's a breakfast casserole is what it boils down to. Breakfast casserole. And it's fun, but you can there's lots of things you can do ahead of time for breakfast in the morning without I remember being stressed out making cinnamon rolls the day before and it was just, you know, you got so much to do the day on Christmas Eve that you really don't have time. So let's get them done ahead of time and get them in the freezer and ready to go. Now, what I learned from, from this red cookbook was when you make your cinnamon rolls. Now, this is, this is fun. You got to square up your dough, you pat it out, roll it out, square up your dough so that you can smear it with butter and cover it with cinnamon and sugar. It already tastes wonderful. And, and roll it up. Well, you can't cut it with a knife or you mess up your little curls, your little, little spiral for your cinnamon rolls. Now, I like to melt butter and, and get you a supply of aluminum pans so that you can put them in the freezer and not put your pan that you use all the time. Let's let's get a supply of these aluminum pans. You can get three for, you know, a, a couple of bucks at the grocery store. You can order them on Amazon and get a dozen. That's what I usually do is just get a dozen coming to the house so that I have these 13 by 9 pans. And I make these cinnamon rolls and let them rise and I pre-bake them. You let them rise and pre-bake them. Then you can freeze them. You don't want to freeze the dough that hasn't risen. So I pre-bake them and then wrap them up good and put them in the freezer and then you can take them out and all they've got to do is warm them up. They can either take them out and warm them up in the microwave or you can take them out and put them in the oven and, and let them warm up because that'll make the house smell really good. And then 
mix up your cream cheese icing. And all that is, is some salt. So and if you don't have cream cheese, then that's okay. All you can use is powdered sugar and some cream and stir it up to a thin paste and then pour it over your cinnamon roll. And there you got it. If you want to make a cream cheese icing, then you soften your cream cheese. You add a little bit of butter to it and a little bit of, of um, powdered sugar and mix it all up. And you can have this pre-made in a jar in or in a bag. That's even better. Put it in a Ziploc bag and then you cut the tip off and you can just pipe it onto your cinnamon rolls. It's real easy. It's really easy. You can do the same thing making a, a French toast bake. Take some leftover rolls and cut them up and then make an egg mixture and, and pour over. It's kind of like a bread pudding. And Leanne's recipes are on our website. They're, they're just wonderful. But there's lots of things you can do. Lots of things you do. And there's lots of things in this little red book that you can make. But learning to make a basic roll dough will be fun. And use bread flour. Use bread flour. Now, to cut your cinnamon rolls, once you make your little tube, rolled up tube, and you want to do it long ways. You don't want to, you want to, you want to roll it up on the long side so that they don't get huge and fat. You want them about that size. Take dental floss, plain dental floss, not, not cinnamon or, or whatever spiced uh, spearmint dental floss, just plain dental floss and slide it under the cinnamon roll and then cross it over and then pull it. And it just cuts the cinnamon roll without mashing the cinnamon roll. And it's a wonderful way. And do it about one inch slices. Put them in your greased pan and then let them rise and cook them. And then wrap them up and put them in the freezer. They are really good. And you've got your cinnamon rolls done. It takes about an hour to, well, it only takes like 15 minutes to make the dough up and then you let it rise and then you push it down and you spread it out. And I'll show you, when I make mine, I'll show you. I'll show you how to do it. But invest in this cookbook. You can probably find them at a used bookstore. You can find them on Amazon. You can find them on eBay. Find this cookbook and get it into your cookbook. It's the one cookbook, and I recommend Leanne's cookbooks too, but they're about menu planning. This cookbook is about everything. Everything you could possibly need to know about cooking without getting overwhelmed by the internet. The internet just drives us nuts. But this could be in your library. This can become your, your favorite cookbook too. It taught me how to cook. Now, a couple of Christmases ago, I put together, well, Thanksgiving, I made an apple pie. Now, I don't make pie crust. I've never been good at pie crust. I'm not even going to try. But Robert buys me these Pillsbury pie crust in a box in the dairy section. And these pie crusts are as good as anything. Now, I have learned how to flute the edges around the sides, but I made this apple pie. I got some Granny Smith apples. They make the best apple pies. They're a little tart. And I sliced them up in little tiny slices after I peeled them all. And I layered, well, you gotta, you got to cut everything up. And then you take a cup of sugar and about three or four tablespoons of flour and however much cinnamon you want in this apple pie. And you take your apples and put them in a Ziploc bag and you pour this stuff in there and flip it around. Keeps the mass down. And I layered all of them into the, the pie crust. And I like a deep dish pie crust. And then I put the top on it. And I mean, I put... 
I won't, I put so many apples in it that it was like two or three inches over the edge. It was like bounded up and I layered them all in there. I was real particular with it too. And you put little dots of butter in it, little pats of butter along the way. And you put your pie crust over it and then seal it around the edges. Now, you put it in the oven and you bake it till it gets golden brown. And you take it out and the whole top will fall in. And you kind of want it to. You got to cut some slits in it to keep it from, you know, getting too big. But it's the best apple pie you ever put in your mouth. And it's not hard to make. I don't even need a recipe. You know, you have sugar and you put some flour with it and some cinnamon and stir it all up. Yum. Okay. Cooking, having the right tools in your house, and we've pretty much all got the right tools because we like gadgets. We like gadgets. One of the things I like when I'm baking is a um, my dough hook on my mixer because that keeps me, it sort of needs the stuff. And if you have a, a bread machine, use that if you want to. But this basic sweet roll dough will, will change your life. Now, I don't put a lot of sugar in my dough because I make lots of things with this dough. And sometimes I take, um, I make a monkey bread. So people want to know how to make monkey bread. You get a, a you get a bunt cake pan and we, I've got three of them and you grease the inside of it really well <laughs> and then you take your basic dough and you cut it into pieces like 24 pieces or more and when you cut it into pieces then you're going to roll it in butter melted butter and then you're going to roll it in brown sugar and cinnamon and if you like nuts you can put some chopped nuts in it, sprinkle chopped nuts all around it. My daughter-in-law doesn't like nuts, so I, I don't do that. I don't put nuts in things. But you can make a monkey bread with um, brown sugar and cinnamon and just layer it in there half halfway. Then fill the thing up to the half point because it's going to rise the rest of the way. And you have this amazing little pull apart bread that everybody loves. And you can dump it out of the pan and put cream cheese icing all over it. Or you can have some dipping stations where they can dip it into stuff. But I take that same recipe, eliminate the, I eliminate the sugary stuff and I turn it into a pull apart herb bread. So you can mix some, some basil, some thyme, some different things that you, garlic that you like, garlic rolls. And for an hors d'oeuvre, you can have this wonderful same dough, not real sweet, but you turn it into an herb monkey bread. And you can, Roll it in olive oil and then roll it in the spices and then put it in your bunt cake pan. And it's really good. And the darker, uh, for the, the cinnamon roll one, if you want to make like a sticky bun type thing, use dark brown sugar and pecans. Chopped up pecans. And you've got pecan monkey bread. So it's all about thinking about what you like and just throwing in some spices that you like. So it could be thyme and basil and all kinds of stuff. You've all got this dried up stuff in your pa in your pantries, in your, in your drawer where your spices are. And it's thinking about what you want to cook 
and what's going to go with things. But you can make these things ahead. But you got to leave the bunt stuff in the pans because making them ahead and they don't stay together well. They don't stay together well. Okay, so that's that's my breads. You got to have bread flour to make them good. And the rolls are real easy. If you want to just make rolls, I usually get a bunch of those aluminum pans and I melt butter in the bottom, bottom of the pans. And then I take the roll dough, which uh, I'm about like this, a little bit bigger than a meatball, not, maybe not even as big as a meatball, and roll it in the butter and put it in the pan and put the lid on the pan because I've got these tops that are clear and I let them rise and I pre-cook them. I pre-cook them for Christmas and Thanksgiving. I pre-cook them. That way I don't have to worry about that. All I have to do is get them in the oven and get them, you know, I let them thaw up and then I put them in the oven and get them hot. And then you can put butter all over them and melt some butter, pour all over them, and they're just really good. Uh, so, folks, baking's not hard. You just can't do it in a hurry. See, most of the time we get in a hurry. Yesterday, I cooked, I, I put the beans on about one o'clock in the afternoon. I let them sit for an hour and then I cooked them for two and a half, two hours. Now, I cooked them on low. You can throw them in the crock pot and they're going to cook on low. Um, if on my eye of my snow, stove, I'll, I'll stir them every few minutes. But the secret is not to ever cook on high. When we cook on high, we make disasters for ourselves. So don't cook on high. The highest temperature I cook at is to scramble eggs, and then I have to stay right with it because I want a really hot skillet to scramble eggs. And it's only recently that I learned how to scramble a fluffy egg. Because when I was taught to scramble eggs, it was just to start stirring them in a cold, a cold um, skillet. And you know, they stick then. But if your skillet is good and hot, they won't stick. And a little olive oil, a little coconut oil. I love coconut oil fried eggs, uh, scrambled eggs. So make it easy on yourself by not cooking on high. Because I didn't even scorch my beans yesterday. And I usually cook them in the crock pot, but I cooked them on top of the stove. I could have done the same thing putting them in the crock pot and turning them up on high because high on a crock pot is like low on my stove. So folks, don't be afraid to cook from scratch. If you got a guide and you can download this cookbook today on your Kindle for 20 bucks. This is the best 20 bucks you will ever spend. Ever. And it's a great gift. It's a great gift for anybody getting married or going out into their own apartment. It's a good gift for them to learn from. So be kind to yourself. Don't cook on high. And mark on your calendar when you're going to get your turkey out of the freezer. We don't even have a turkey yet, but I've got that on my grocery list for Robert to pick us up about a 14 pound turkey. What else we want to talk about? Uh, I didn't write my little list. Anyway, today's Anti-Procrastination Day. What's your mission for today? It's to get some things done that you haven't, that you've been putting off. So what have you been procrastinating about, folks? You know what it is. <clears throat> yep, you know what it is. So let's have some fun. And I might be on here a little, little bit later. I may make some more cooking videos. 
putting my stuffing together. <coughs> Pardon me. I better get a drink of coffee. So, folks, some of us didn't have people to teach us how to cook. My mother couldn't cook. My grandmother could cook. Oh, another fun thing. Oh, this is really good. My grandmother used to make apple pie filling. And she'd make peach pie filling and all kinds of pie fillings. But she would take a canned biscuit. Now get this. She would take a canned biscuit and her rolling pin and roll it out in a circle. And then she would put a dollop of that pie filling. Now you can buy pie filling in a can. And people are going to think you're the most amazing mom in the world if you make these. They're fried pies. Fried pies. I remember helping Granny make fried pies. And she would take a saucer, a teacup saucer, and put it down and cut it out. And then she would she put a little flour down. And then she'd flip the little piece of dough all around. And she would put this, put this little dollop of pie filling. Looks like a big tablespoon. And then she'd take her fork, dip it in flour, and crimp the edges. And she would flip the pie, little pie over, and crimp the other side. And then she would put it in a skillet with some um, butter or some shortening or s some oil. And she would fry that pie. And she'd let them cool. And then she'd drizzle them with powdered sugar. It makes a mess, though. But it's still good. Fried pies. Yum. Yum, yum, yum. And she used canned dough. She just used plain old biscuit dough in a can. And we thought we had died and gone to heaven. It's not hard. It's not hard. And, and you can do it. You can really do it. It's, it's our perfectionism that stops us from getting in the kitchen and making wonderful things. Another thing that stops us is a messy kitchen. So if you've been putting off cleaning your kitchen or shining your sink, today is the day that you're going to do that. So let's get in our kitchens and get them clean so that we can get in there and play with making some wonderful things. And when you make them yourself, I mean, another thing that's fun to make is a, is a cobbler. Cobblers are so easy. All you do is take one part sugar and, well, half a part sugar. So let's say you want them, you've got <clears throat> some fresh peaches or even frozen peaches. I keep frozen peaches in my freezer all the time so that I can whip up a peach collar. You can use canned peaches too. And what you do is you stir up one cup of self-rising flour, about a half a cup of sugar with it, and some milk and an egg, and stir it all up. And you pour that over. Well, what I like to do is get it in. I put a stick of butter in my cast iron Dutch oven. You don't even have to use a Dutch oven. You can use any kind of casserole dish that's got high sides on it. <clears throat> or you can use your cast iron skillet. Put some butter in there and melt it. I like to put... I like to dump the peaches in the dough. So I pour the batter in the, the hot skillet and then... I put the peaches in inside the dough. I just, I, the peaches have got a little sugar on them. So they've made their, their, they've made um, a little glaze around the peaches. And you just dump them in like five different spots and put it in the oven. It's peach cobbler. Now you want to know how to make pine, pineapple upside down cake? This is so easy. 
you get a big iron skillet and you melt a stick of butter in the skillet and then you put about a cup of brown sugar in the skillet and stir it around until it's bubbly not on high but just stir it around and then you take your can of pineapple slices and lay them in the bat into the the sugary mixture and if you want to make it really look pretty put some maraschino cherries in it now while you've done this you've stirred up a, a yellow cake mix that's it just a yellow cake mix and that you can get for a dollar at the grocery store and you stir that up and I like to reserve the pineapple juice from the sliced pineapples and use that for the liquid in the cake mix yum and and you pour the batter over the the pineapple and put it in the oven at 350 until it's golden brown and then while it's still warm you can let it sit for a minute so it's not too hot you can put a plate over it and flip it over pineapple upside down cake is one of my husband's favorite things favorite things is to make pineapple upside down cake I may have to do that today <laughs> but you see it's not hard it's not hard you just have to do it but you need a clean kitchen so let's get in there and let's clean our kitchens and let's have some fun let's have some fun and plan some menus you can do this you really can if I can cook anybody can cook and this cookbook showed me the way it's my favorite cookbook because it's got everything everything in one place and it's not the internet everything in one place so have some fun today I'll probably get on here and do some more stuff gotta get some work done first see cooking for me is my reward for getting my work done so as soon as I get some work done I will get back on here and play I don't know what that says anyway I love you all I will talk to you later